All right, coming up on Saturday and Sunday is our annual Miracle Weekend Telethon benefiting BC Children's Hospital. And all this week, we're going to be showcasing doctors and patients from the facility and the remarkable work that they are doing. We're joined now by Dr. Quinn Doan, a pediatric emergency physician and clinician scientist. Uh, doctor, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. You know, we've had a lot of stories in the news recently about, about adults dealing with mental health conditions and going to emergency rooms. And, and we want to talk about that as far as children are concerned because you've seen a, a tremendous increase in the amount of kids that are coming to the ER with mental health issues. That's right. Over the last 10 years, we've seen an increase of about 80% over the last 10 years. Compare that to about 25% in overall volumes. So we had to figure out a way to better deal with that. Right. So uh, you've been trained. Uh, you've been trained, obviously, in, in dealing with broken bones and things like That's that. Right. But dealing with um, mental health issues, you haven't. So how did you go about tackling the problem? So I worked with a pediatric psychiatrist, and we explored various op um, options. And at the end of the day, we felt that it was best to help emergency clinicians mm -hmm. um, better assess and also guide them in the management with regards to what services and what level of services to refer these patients to. Right, and you came up with a sort of a map and, and t take us through a little bit about when a patient comes in and they're dealing, there's a lot of different variables as far as uh, what mental health condition they're actually dealing with. Exactly, so often mental health we think of psychiatry. Right. However, mental health involves everything from social to behavior to various other needs that these kids have. So we created a tool to help clinicians assess all those aspects of a child's mental health mm -hmm. and then to tease out both the severity and the degree of acuity as to what their needs are so that we can best meet them. Now you've been talking about things like um, uh, alcohol and drugs, relationship and bullying, anxiety, safety, sexual behavior, things like that, abuse. There's a lot of different things. That, That's right. So how does, how does a, a doctor go about and trying to assess that? Is it, is it talking to the patient? Is it bringing someone in to help out? How does it work? So we'd love to bring someone in to help about. Yeah, um, not always the, available. Not always available. So what we do is now we have, um, it's an electronic tool mm -hmm. that has some prompting questions to help the clinicians who's maybe less experienced to um, probe certain difficult issues with the family um, with and without um, the youth present. And then um, based on their response, we can judge in terms of the severity right. and, and talk about whether or not they've already uh, accessed any help for those issues. Have you seen uh, a, a, an increase in the way patients are being dealt with now? Do you see a, a big difference? Well, I think that the major difference is how um, we are be better able to um, approach them. And so we're less timid about doing these uh, mental health assessments because now we have help. And um, when we use this tool, it also has an algorithm that helps us decide what services and what level of acuity we need to access. Mm -hmm. And so with the information we gathered from this assessment, it's easier to discuss with these resources as well. The questions that they normally would want to know to be able to triage and prioritize right. um, appointments, we've already addressed them using the tool. And how, uh, I've also learned a little bit about how to deal with, with young people and talking about these types of issues as well. It's different obviously dealing with an adult, but you're saying, you know, does that hurt? Does, you know, is, is yes. your bone? But to deal with those kind of sensitive issues, has that been a challenge as well? It's, um, I think youth are a lot more forthcoming than we think. Okay. If we talk to them, if we are honest in our approach with them and we're sensible, um, they're actually quite uh, willing to share. Um, a lot of information we also gather from other people around them. So their parents, mm -hmm. sometimes the school counselor will be there, sometimes a youth worker will be there. And so we gather information quite comprehensively from all their youth surroundings. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, a problem that a lot of people are dealing with, uh, yeah. adults and now obviously children obviously yeah. as well. So it's uh, good on you. It's a great, uh, great idea. And uh, thanks very much for sharing with us this Thank morning. You. Appreciate it. And just a reminder that the Miracle Weekend for BC Children's Hospital kicks off at 6.55 this Saturday night uh, right here on Global. I'm going to be there to kick everything off. Looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun and we'll continue right through until Sunday. And again, we're going to show, showcase parents, caregivers, supporters from all over BC. And of course, you can also donate online, miracleweekend.com as well to BC Children's Hospital. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate it. Thank you.